can't read any of this. Oh no, you can't. You can't read any of this. I am leaking out the, the side of my flute. That's how you know you're having a great time. If anything, this is an exercise in focus. Constantly, like, my brain is, like, starting to think about, like, dinner. <laughs> oh, by the way, the other thing that I was doing was what we were discussing yesterday, Magical PG. The setting of my embouchure simultaneously as I inhale. I don't know if you noticed, but I was totally doing that, and it was amazing. Man, life-changing. I have taught three of my students this today, <laughs> and it has been life-changing. <laughs> Oh, Bob, that is the greatest, greatest typo. I'm going to call it that forever now. I think someone made me accidentally drop the F-bomb on my YouTube channel because they put WTF, but I just like read it out loud and I didn't even realize it. And like the chat was going insane. I was like, okay, there's no use pretending. I need to just tell you guys that when I'm not working, I, I swear. If you personally decide to swear in the future when you're an adult, that's on you. That is not on me. I will not hold this responsibility. Therefore, I will try not to swear. But you guys know the meme Shrek is love, Shrek is life. It's terrible. It's horrible. Don't look it up, actually. But um, our conductor, there's this beautiful oboe solo happening. But clearly he wants it to have more soul. The normal conductor thing to do would be like, come out a little bit more. You're the star of the show here. But no, stops the rehearsal, looks dramatically at the oboist, points at her and goes, oboe is life. Of course, I came home and immediately told John. Every time we hear like a beautiful oboe solo come up, we always look at each other and go, oboe is life. So right now, double tonguing is considered to be a very basic skill that every flutist needs to learn. But this is how this chapter goes. <clears throat> On articulation, the double tonguing used to be of high consideration among flute players, but with all possible deference to the eminent masters who still use it. I am of opinion that in this age of refinement, it ought to be entirely exploded. It is in every point, view it which way we will, a trick of execution, which has as much of quackery in it as any of the wonderful nostrums which have for their object the renovation of human life. It is also a false and bad articulation, and however well it might have served the purpose of old masters when the flute was, as it were, an instrument full of quackeries, it is certainly unworthy the professors of the present age and of the great perfection to which the instrument is now brought. Today is one of those days where my brain is wrestling with so many things. Today's schedule, the home repairs, feeling like I could have done more than I did, but knowing that I've made the right decision to take this morning off so I could actually get more done. There's just so many thoughts going through my head right now that I'm like, okay, no. I have to just look at my practice checklist and just do it for half an hour and be like, Yes, I did the practice thing. <laughs> so we will commence that right now. But here we go. Just gonna do my little frowny stretches. <sighs> do some lip trills. I did it. I did my practice session. And it was actually longer than half an hour. So I'm really proud of myself.
Yes, Nicholas. Y'all conned me into buying this. No, no, I bought this. Since you sent me this, I thought it was the woodite one, like the black one, but it turned out that it was the Avonkel one, which was exactly the one that I had my eye on. It was so comfortable. And then Unsphered sent his flute to me to review with like the whole, you know, Lafrique plus titanium head joint stopper. He popped his twig onto his flute with the intention to make me like it. And he was successful. It's really comfortable. <laughs> Y'all conned me into getting this, but I have no regrets. <laughs> you guys have absolutely successfully made me feel a lot better. I came into this not feeling great. Thanks guys. Y'all know how to cheer, cheer me up. You just start talking about food. I'm not kidding, guys. John won my heart through food. There was a moment that I remember very vividly. I literally could feel myself falling deeper in love with him. I wasn't feeling so hot. I think I was like on my period or something. He's just like, it's okay, I'll come over. He doesn't tell me. But when he shows up, he shows up with a box of homemade lasagna. I literally could feel myself like melting. That's how you cheer me up is you just start talking about food. I am a very simple person. <laughs> do I do any flute arrangements? I will be completely honest with you. No, I don't. There is no inherent interest in me <laughs> to make flute arrangements. I know that sounds so odd, especially coming from someone who does love playing the flute and loves reading flute arrangements and i just realized that that is probably the first time i've ever voiced that i think i'm just slowly becoming more comfortable with myself and being okay with the fact that there are just some things that i don't have any interest in doing and there's nothing wrong with that and i love that other people have interest in doing it because then i don't have to force myself to do it you know do you guys have that kind of thing for some things like you don't really want to admit that you have no interest in doing it, even though most people would think that you would, but you just don't. For you, it's composing. Yeah, right? I love composers who write for the flute, but do I have any like desire to write, compose? No. You know how some people get like a tune stuck in their heads and then they have to write it down and then they have to flesh it out and they, they, they have to, they get that itch? Yeah, me? Nothing. If you're to try and get me to be a, a composer, it's I'm basically just like a goldfish. Mm. I know that to some people that sounds like absolutely crazy and like, you know, how how are you so empty? <laughs> and there's also nothing wrong with only wanting to compose and not wanting to play it. That's what makes the world go round. I think we're all exhausted in some way, shape or form, no? And I don't think it's worth pretending that we're not all so exhausted i'm not gonna sit here and pretend that i'm like super cheerful i mean i'm smiling right now but it's just because i'm not like full-on depressed right now i have resting nice face i recognize that about myself like my face just kind of settles in a small smile i think some people misinterpret my resting nice face as like oh she's happy and everything's fine and i'm like no i'm like dying inside <laughs> But anyway, that's the update for you guys. We're going through another flare. It's it's still nowhere near as bad as last year. Nowhere near as bad. with how clean that was it's still not as as fast as i would like it to be but i'm prioritizing knowing where i'm going what time tomorrow i have no idea please check my instagram yeah i don't know when my, <laughs> my stream is fast. i'm terrible i write it down and then i forget about it <laughs>
tribute to Joe Zija. It's just this. That, that's all it is. There's nothing wrong with you and you're not crazy if you are looking at your music and you're like, I swear that was fine before. Well, I have news for you. It probably wasn't fine before, but your subconscious probably just kind of erased it in favor of focusing on another spot. So this happens all the time. So essentially you're just constantly trying to find new spots that you don't know as well and filling in those spots. And then eventually you're just going to know the, the piece so well that nothing's going to throw you off. Yes, polishing. That's exactly it. A few stumbles in there. More time. 